G'day. Uh, my name's Dave Grunsight, and this is Jolene. We're two of the owners at Northern Ival. Um, what we want to start by just letting you know is how we started as a company, because I think that's really important for you as educators. About nine years ago, Avron, who's a creative director um, and one of our partners, he had a different type of business uh, in, in delivering installation into educational spaces and was delivering into a space. Now, he's an industrial designer. And there's a really forward-thinking school in Australia called Northern Beaches Christian School, and the principal's called Stephen uh, Harris. Steve's right now building a school, has just finished building a school in Barcelona. And Steve came up to Avron and they had a chat and he said, oh, you're an industrial designer. Look, this is what we're thinking of doing. This is what we need in education. Right now, everyone's using plastic tables and chairs and that's not helping engagement. That's not improving engagement. The, and this was about nine years ago. Then, they also, then he also said, and the Scandinavian look of furniture, as you're all aware of, is aesthetically pleasing, yet doesn't also help engagement. What we believe engagement should be, should be a we should be able to build a classroom that's flexible and that's comfortable for children to improve engagement. So Avron said, yeah, I'm going to give it a crack. And that was about, nine, that's Australian for, I'll give it a go. Um, <laughs> and nine years ago, we started. So we started 100% in education. We've done nothing else other than education. And I don't think we will do education. And since then, we've built a couple of thousand schools around Australia. Um, currently building a school in Hong Kong and we moved to America. So a couple of years ago, Jolene and I discussed coming to America. We've been planning it for a few years. And last year, Jolene moved her family over here and we manufacture 100% of our products for America, in America, in Plano, Texas. So that's just a little bit about Northern Ivor. Oh, thank you. And, and I'll t actually, it, Thank you for that, by the way, because we believe it's pretty cool. It's important to us. The reason is we're blessed to make our living through education. Um, the least we can do is give jobs back to the children in you know, 15 years' time, 20 years' time, because they're not all going to be working in, in the IT field. Some are going to be in manufacturing. If we take those jobs away from, from the locals, they're going to go to crime, and we, did, we don't want that. We've got seven children between our two families. So that was the least we could do. Now, I'm going to um, show you guys just a little bit about Northern Ival in that everything we do is about engagement and flexibility. So our definition of what a truly flexible environment should be, we have a 60 second rule. Um, what that 60 second rule is, is, is that a classroom should be able to be reconfigured within 60 seconds by a group of five year old children. Okay? If, if a classroom can't be able to be reconfigured, by those children within 60 seconds, it's taking away from the learning environment and our studies have shown, and we do quite a lot of research, that the teachers generally don't move the classrooms around because they don't have the time. So if the kids can do it, the educator can kind of direct them into how they want to do things. And as you can see, these are just some of the Northern Oval classrooms. Truly flexible, I'm gonna let Jolene. Cool, and I think where, um, where we come into it, you know, in amongst what you guys are discussing at this conference as well, is the importance that space plays to the learner. And so, you know, with us, it's not just about product and it's not just about space. And one thing that we sort of pride ourselves on is we've never ever put in one space the same in any school that we've been at. And that's because we're trying to create like very unique spaces that really fit in and facilitate the culture that the school community works in, the pedagogy that they're adopting, and the master plan for the future. But more importantly with us is we try and focus on the users in the space, and that's how we approach our product design. So very much thinking about the emotional, social well-being of the educator and the, and the learner inside the space, thinking about where education's going and doing a lot of research, you know, where are we going to be in 15, 20 years time and what are the expectations that we're going to have out of our students and how can we as a company facilitate that from a space and a furniture perspective. So when David talks about the furniture being intuitive and the user being able to come in and take ownership, this is what we mean. Like you'll see with a lot of what we do and we'll have a great play outside with the furniture, but our shapes are simple and very intuitive. So any type of learner could come in or any type of personality could come in as you guys have in that space and really start creating you know, your own le learning environments. Yeah, so, and on that, if you have a look at the screens, um, 
these are in situ photos of some children using it. And the reason I'm going to show you this is, if you can see in the far right, you see how those kids are rocking, like, you might not be able to see the children too well, but you can see the, the rocker ottomans that are on a very slight angle. Now, I'm going to ask someone, I'm going to ask the audience, this is a little bit interactive, it's not just us standing up here for a few minutes. Um, who wants to be a volunteer? Dun. Okay, we're going to have two, so don't worry. Come up. So I'm just going to explain, this, this is a product that, that explains Northern Ivel, and I think you guys will get it. So if you want to stand where Jolene is at, what I'm going to do is throw a piece of furniture, okay? <laughs> you may not have seen this on stage before, and I want you to catch it, and we're going to get you to use it. So this is the Rocker Ottoman. It's one of our key pieces, right? How light? Very light. Very light. Very light. So just, as, just to understand the intuitiveness of Northern Ivel, um, a rock ottoman makes a round ottoman. So how many people here in schools or have seen round ottomans in schools? Like, you know, just a standard round ottoman. This makes a complete round ottoman obsolete like you wouldn't believe. So it's got four different seating options, just to explain oh, it. More. more than four. More than four, but <laughs> lots of seating options. So do you want to just sit on it normally? Sure. And by the way, guys, this has a 400 pound weight rating um, and it's solely foam. If there's any structure inside an ottoman, it makes it obsolete because how, do how does a five-year-old child move that around a classroom? So that's the first option. The next option is in five minutes, the kid gets a little bit, what's a bit of movement, and you can sit ever so slightly. You just rock front to back. So feet to the front, and then you can rock ever so slightly front to back. Now, we've done about 15,000 of these in schools in Australia, and we've done, geez, a few thousand now in America. So the next seating option, a couple of minutes later, so they don't want to disturb the children next to them, they just get up and flick it to the side, and then you can rock ever so slightly left to right. OK? Now, what a lot of young boys like to do for a fourth option is they love to straddle things. Right? Are you going to straddle? You can, you can do it. So? So yeah, there's four different seating options on, on, on one piece of furniture, and everything's modular. So hang on, hang on. You, you've got to, if you stand for a minute, you know, it's actually a desk as well. So, yeah. you know, as, as much, and this is why, you know, we just ask the questions and think about the different ways that you can set the space up around yourself, but this would be a perfect standing height desk, two rockers on top of each other, or even utilising, you know, that chair with the rocker on top. So really think about, you know, the pieces not just as like a seat and a surface, it's a space for every child. And that's kind of, you know, the philosophy for us around the design. Yeah, and that's, and, and we believe that there should be, and this is, sorry, and I didn't say this at the beginning, Northern Noble's philosophy is that there should be a safe space for every type of learner. It doesn't matter where you are on the, on the spectrum, it doesn't matter where you sit, doesn't matter what type of person, there should be a safe space in a Northern Ivel classroom for you to be engaged and learn. So that's, that's like the whole premise of everything our design team build. Um, thank you very much for that. Yeah. Just very quickly, another, I heard someone, because we needed another volunteer. Who's a, who's a, very, who's a very tactile learner? Can we have you come up for a sec? So whilst you're coming up, uh, educators, and by the way, we've never designed a piece of furniture without ed educators telling us there's a need for something. Um, educators came up to us and said that we're missing 40% of the population for engagement. They said, you know, kinesthetic learners account for about 40% of the population. So they asked us to come up with something, a product to keep kinesthetic learners engaged. And these guys, who's, who's sat on the grassy domes outside? The, Domes like this. You got, yeah, a lot of you experienced it. The function of it is specifically for those tactile learners. So, just sit on it as you would. Right? And feel it and do what you would normally do. Okay? So a kinesthetic learner, how does it feel? Awesome. Awesome? <laughs> yeah. The kinesthetic learner will sit on it truthfully and what they do is you want to know how they work. There's your solid surface. For your writing, or for your Chromebook, or for your iPad, you can work on it. But what they do is you'll see them, they sit and rub it exactly like you did, and as soon as they rub it, they're engaged. So this is a little bit about Northern Ivel and, and about, I know it's crazy, it's weird, 
education's changing, spaces are changing. But I think, you know, in amongst it all, you know, when we talk about, like, equity inside the classroom, diversity, and all of these 25 very unique little personalities or big personalities that walk into a learning space every day, if we can think about the way that we design it with furniture that is intuitive, flexible, agile, multi-purpose, and you know, the, the way that we set up the spaces to be eclectic learning spaces. You can see how that's going to capture, you know, the engagement of the learners far better than, you know, if you've got 25 of the same desks and chairs. Yeah. So, and you see how, you can't stop, can you? Yeah. Would you be more engaged you if you're on. rubbing that in learning in a space? Right? Yeah. 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 Thank you very much as well. So... So this is just a little bit about Northern Ivel. Um, I just want to throw it out to some questions because I know that a lot of you are going to have questions. Normally leave five minutes. I'm going to leave a little bit more because this is so different. And by the way, guys, what's really important here is Australia is only two years ahead of America. Okay? It, 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 that's what it seems to be. When we started in Australia, everyone said this is never going to be normal. This is never going to be a normal classroom. Now, every single school in Australia is pretty much built like this. Every, this is just normal. I know for here it's, who here by show of hands thinks this is a little bit different? <laughs> yeah? Than traditional classrooms? Um, so I'm just going to throw it out to some questions um, and we're here to answer them. So what questions do you all have of us? Fire code? Fire rated, Jolene? Yeah, all good. So we, uh, like as David mentioned, everything is manufactured in Dallas, Texas. And we set all of our standards to, like, Californian fire standards. So, you know, we really harp on the fact that we design only for education. And, you know, there's a lot of thinking that then goes into that. Like, there is, there's a, um, it's definitely out there that I think educational environments are harder, the students are harder on the furniture and educational environments that they are in prisons. You know, so these are the things, like, if you ask about, you know, fire rating, is it robust, you know, will this last in these environments? Like, these are things that we've been doing for nine years and really working through so that, you know, it's designed to last. Yeah. And, and by the way, I have a, I had a broken wrist and I had a, an operation. Back in Australia, people were saying to me, like, how we test things is we test it to jail standards. We believe in testing something to the, to the level above where it should be. Um, so I damaged my wrist beating something up to see if it would pass into a school. So, and just before the next question, I just want to show you that we're not, like, we K right through to tertiary. So right here on the sides, there's a, this is at Sydney University in the business center. So this is one of our pieces of furniture, and I'm just going to show you how they've set it up. So as you can see, all you do is if you change the fabric types, you'll be able to see the different the, the different years that it'll do. So this is a university. So they took, as you can see, I'll go back, that one piece of furniture that had a couple of extra tables, but just have a look at the different usages of this. That one piece of furniture with a couple of extra tables there. So you can see one classroom can be tr what truly flexible means. And this is all within less than 60 seconds, that. Oh, I see some of you taking photos, so I'll leave that there. Yeah. Um, questions? Yes? No, so we did a study, that's a good question by the way, we did a study on 200 educators and the feedback was the height adjustable tables, now I preface it with this, the electric, the electric height adjustable tables are the best things ever, except they're $5,000 each and they're really difficult to get quite a lot of them into schools. On the study of 200 uh, uh, schools that we worked on, um, the height adjustable tables are fantastic in theory, but to have to change four different legs multiplied by, and I know a lot of you are nodding here, multiplied by X tables, educators never do it. So what we believe is that every classroom should, remember a, a, a classroom for us is a safe space for any different type of learner. Some people love to learn standing. Anyone here love standing, thinking pr pr over, yeah, 20% of the population, it represents it here as well. You know, so we, we believe that some 
table should be at standing level at 1050 or 950 depending on what year it is. Some should be sitting, some should be lying. So a classroom should be able to facilitate learning for any different type of learner. So we don't have hard adjustable specifically for that reason. But you'd find in our learning spaces exactly what David was saying. So there'd be like floor based seating, standard, you know, height tables, which we then can, we, so everything we make, we make to order. It's, it's all sort of, um, you know, it's a standard product range, but it's all made as the order comes in um, and very much customizable with colors and fabrics and, and, and all of that. But so when we design the spaces, you'll see that we'll often put like the standing tables, the, the static tables, and then the floor base seating. So again, creating like different opportunities and spaces to learn. Other questions? Yes. I'm just curious to know, what would the average cost be for a classroom to outfit like 20 kids? It's a really great question and it really depends. Um, how we've priced our products, and it's, by the way guys, we're really transparent about it because we're proud of it. Um, we're not expensive, we're not cheap, That things that come out of certain countries, we're right in the middle in the sweet spot. So how you'd work out a Northern Ivel classroom, it's between $350 and $550 per child. So instead of, a, instead of working it out on a classroom, just work that out. So like a basic Northern Ivel classroom might be say $400 a child, and then you might have on stuff, it, de it depends on what your budget is. It could be right up to a hell of a lot, more, even more than 550, but generally our average is, say, between 350 and 550 a classroom. Does that answer your question? It does, it does. And this would be fantastic to have, but there's no way that I would get that money, I and mean, the district wouldn't give me money for that. Look, I, I completely understand, and, and we're not for everyone. I just want you to know, we, can't, we don't believe you can be all things to everyone. We'd love to be. Um, but not every single school has, the, has, has a budget. I mean, some people only have a budget where they can import certain things out of China and they can do $30 a chair. It's not for everyone, I completely understand. Yes, so, oh sorry, yeah. No, I was just gonna say to that as well, you know, we really try and provide quality pieces into the spaces. And I think what we like people to get their minds thinking about is actually when you design classrooms like this, there's a whole lot less furniture you put in the space than what you would do if you were trying to furnish it for a, you know, every child to have a desk and a chair. So you really got to like, you know, challenge yourself to look at the pieces and understand like how many different ways they can be utilized. What about cleaning? I'll let Jolene answer that. Cleaning is easy. Yeah, so look, we, you, I mean, again, lots of fabric and vinyl choices. Zips? Yeah, just like any vinyl, you can pretty much wash it down. It's definitely not stab proof, but we say there's bigger issues. If the furniture's getting stabbed, then, the, you know, the furniture. Um, I did actually do a presentation last week for a district, and they asked me if we warrant stabbing of furniture, but I, like, I don't think anyone warrants vandalism. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty easy to clean down. The, it's antimicrobial um, vinyls that we use. Again, you know, we're thinking about healthcare. I mean, I mean, education. So a lot of the vinyls and stuff that we use, like from healthcare, we'd then bring over into education. And as you see on top of it as well, this foam, so this is our proprietary foam. It's a special foam designed just for education. As you can see here, we put zips on things. Other than the vinyls, you can throw it in the wash. We get teachers wash that stuff. This, this foam is going to outlast all of our lifetimes. Yep. So in five years' time, you've got four Ottomans that are dirty, that have been washed and they look trashed. You phone your dealers up in your area, and we're in most states in America now, you phone your dealer up and order just the cover, in any, and it's about a third of the price. So long term, it's, going to, it's really cheap. So that's why we put zips on everything. That's the reason. Other questions, please? I think that... Um you know, it's important to when you start to think about the space is how are you going to make that, ensure that that space is relevant, like well into the future, you know, and so we, I would say, like we spend, a, you know, we're a furniture company, we're a research company, you know, we're out there trying to give you guys the options that are going to warrant your spaces, you know, well and truly for 15 years time. And we talk about, you know, not having a lot of money to spend on furniture, but the amount of beautiful new buildings I've gone into that three years ago were furnished with stuff that is not relevant anymore, those districts are having to repurchase furniture that now is. 
So it's really something to, to think about when designing, you know, your spaces, is, is how is this going to be used, you know, long term. Anyone else? Well, listen, thank you very much. We're going to be outside to take questions and to chat with you, but thank you for your time as well. We appreciate it. <laughs>